What's up guys, James Blunt here with MMOS.com returning once again with a top 10 list video that is long overdue. One of our most popular top 10 videos, in fact, needs a bit of an update. Steam has transitioned and changed so much over the past two years, it's crazy. And the free-to-play section has more than tripled its size. And that being said, I couldn't quite make this video list as epic as it needed to be. But then I realized just what it needed to make it right. It needs Bakerman Brad. What's up, world? It has been a while. And James is right. This list needs me. It deserves me. It probably wants me. And, uh, Steam has changed a lot. And the free-to-play section is close to taking over Steam by competing with the popularity of pay-to-play games. Which is a good thing in our opinion. Very good. So prepare yourselves and your faces for our revamped version of MMO Hut's Top 10 Free-to-Play Steam Games. 2.0. 2.0. Starting with number 10, Ghost Recon Phantoms. This game has gone through quite a bit of reworking over the past year, recently celebrating its first anniversary on Steam, launching there with major changes including better matchmaking, several reworks to the price of weapons and upgrades, and more recently, the release of Team Deathmatch as their latest game mode. Nowhere else are you going to be able to find a better free-to-play tactical third-person shooter that requires as much strategy and teamwork to win. Yeah, uh, that sounds pretty specific, actually. I, uh, I doubt there's going to be many that there really match that. Now, there are still plenty of players that claim that the cash shop is a bit broken. Can't really defend that, but uh, that doesn't stop close to 4,500 players on average from playing the game daily, both in Europe and North America. Which are separated. A lot of the game's fans feel that it's a bit underrated, and yet we felt that it fell perfectly at number 10 on our list. Mm hmm So, changing the pace a little bit, we have Arc Age at number 9. Yeah, try and fumble the ball there a little bit with Arc Age in the beginning, promising players a lot not really delivering, restricting access to big parts of the game both deliberately and indirectly for its free players. The bottom line is, there are a lot better ways to manage a free-to-play game with an optional, well in this case, a recommended subscription model. Whoa, okay, so why are we putting it on the list then? Well, despite its rough streak with Tryon so far, XL Games actually designed an overall badass sandbox MMORPG that offers nearly everything players are looking for in the game of that genre. Hmm, okay, so the problem lies mostly with the publisher. Right, but it's it's weird. It's not really normal for Tryon. Hmm. Hopefully they're going to start picking up the slack. Like they did just release the Dread Prophecies update, which is their biggest update so far, that focuses on the ships and sailings in the game, making that an overall better mechanic. Yeah, now you're able to customize your ships with different equipment that make it take on a specific role when playing the content that's actually available at sea now. But despite the troubled waters that the game has been through, there's still a boatload of people that are playing the game. Yeah, I see what you did there. Eh, enough people to put it at number 9 on the list. Hopefully Tryon can get their ship together and make a comeback. Wow, the puns are real now, huh? Well, I'm known to be very punny. Oh, God. What? That's enough. Alright. Number 8. Never, Never win. Want to brace yourself. Having just released its sixth expansion, the biggest one yet, Elemental Evil, and making its way to the Xbox One recently, Neverwinter tends to offer plenty of new content, often enough to keep players interested. There's about 5,000 players online at any given time, and that's just on Steam. You can also play the game via Arc Games and, like you mentioned, the Xbox One. It basically dominates the popularity of all of the MMORPGs in the free-to-play section of Steam. Well, for now. Remember, there's another one that we're going to talk about later. Oh yeah, that's right. Neverwinter provides a ton of what MMORPG players are looking for. An epic storyline, regardless of if you care anything about Dungeons & Dragons. Nine races and seven class options now. Which most of the races you don't even have to pay to get. That's true, the Dragonborn is the only one you have to buy. Anyway, it's got a really good, fast-paced action combat system that a lot of players feel should pretty much come standard on all MMOs from now on. Which doesn't seem to be happening. No, nope, it's kind of like they reverted, gone back in time. Anyway, anyway Neverwinter, of course, just like any game, has its faults, but still belongs on this list. All right, number seven, Marvel Heroes 2015. Um, what's with the 2015 part again? Well, it signifies the massive revamp and improvements from its early stages and launch. Adding the 2015 gave them a fresh start with players and critics of the game after they basically said, hey, look, we made it a lot better. It's okay, you can come back. Hmm, makes sense. Well, what's cool about the game is that it's a nice blend between MMOs and action RPGs. 
You've got open world areas all over the place where you can fight along with hundreds of other players and really cool dynamic events like you know, raid bosses and stuff. Yeah, and it definitely helps having a huge roster of Marvel characters to play as. Uh, there's pretty close to 50 heroes ranging from the X-Men, Guardians of the Galaxy. Right now you can actually play as all of the Avengers for free in celebration for the new Avenger movie. And they're always doing that sort of thing. Yeah, there's also like a ton of costumes. The Hulkbuster? Yes! Freaking awesome, right? Yeah. So there's plenty of cosmetic stuff you can buy in the game, so I guess on the downside it can end up costing you some money in order to enjoy it to its full potential. Luckily, Gazillion listens nicely to its players and shapes the game to their liking. So there are plenty of opportunities to unlock your favorite characters if you don't randomly find them in a you know, rare loot box somewhere. Exactly. It's a really fun action RPG game for a huge variety of players, and we see that with its popularity. Therefore, giving it a great spot on this list. But the popularity kind of jumps up from there. Number six is Heroes and Generals. Ah yes, I am familiar with this one. The only first-person shooter that lets you ride into battle on a bicycle. Like Marvel Heroes, it's changed a lot since the beginning from when I actually covered it on MMO Huts. In fact, the game is in early access still. Only because they're constantly trying to improve the game, and again, like you said, with the bicycle thing, this really isn't your typical shooter. There's all kinds of vehicles in the game, from bikes to tanks and planes and bikes. And bikes. Now, now, you have a variety of really large maps to play on. You can play pretty much how you want, whether that be tactical or stealthy or, you know, just run in and kill everybody. But they're starting to introduce more factions, and this is a good example of a game that's grindy, but a fun grindy. You end up getting what you want quick enough so you don't really have to rely on the boosters in the cash shop. So yeah, if you're not already playing the game and have any interest in historical military battle-esque shooters, this is definitely worth giving a shot. Once again, I, I did that pun on purpose. Really? Wait, no, they're not going there. All right. Number five, Path of Exile. Okay, I've got this one. Personally, this is probably my favorite free-to-play game overall. Hey, even more than Smite? Uh, well, I mean, it's a lot different. It's set up the best possible way for a free-to-play game. You get access to every single ounce of its content without paying for a thing. Then, if you want some really awesome-looking visual upgrades to certain things in the game, that's when you pay real money. Cosmetic upgrades like pool footprints, extra blood, pets, or flaming skull stuff, along with the storage conveniences, are the only thing the cash shop is there for. Except for the fireworks. Those things are totally pay to win. Uh, yeah, very pay to win. You just buy them and win the game. Literally. It's ridiculous. I can't believe this. <clears throat> well, besides having the ideal free-to-play business model, the game offers so much for hardcore action RPG fans. It's got an awesome economic system where the currency serves alternative purposes, epic voiced over storyline, the biggest freaking passive tree you could ever dream of giving you access to so many build opportunities. It's got competitive gameplay in the league races, and of course, more skills than you know what to do with. All the skills. So many skills. Much skills. Wow. <laughs> Not to mention, the game is constantly being expanded on. Yeah, The Awakening is their latest expansion, which is still in beta right now, but according to Grinding Gear, they've had a team on this specific expansion alone since the game is launched. Nice! Yeah, it's gonna be huge. They're adding in Act 4 with several new bosses to take on, originally mentioned in the lore from the previous acts. Of course, more skill gems, over 70 new unique items, and a new passive tree mechanic that lets you socket jewels to modify an area of the tree to potentially better suit your build. Sounds legit. Now, not a lot of players are in the Awakening beta, but the game itself sees anywhere between 7,000 and 9,000 players on average on the Steam version alone. Yeah, and that'll probably spike once the new expansion launches for sure. Mm -hmm. But number four is Robocraft. Robocraft. Now, this game plays off the power of user-generated content and does that unlike any other voxel-based game that seems to have flooded the market lately. Indeed. This game falls under several of the awesome categories we've talked about with the other games on this list so far. It has a developer that listens to its players. Check. It's very unique, not really any other games like it. Check. It's constantly being updated to provide interesting new content. Check. And it's changed a lot since its early days. Kinda starting to see a pattern here. Well, good, because there is one. And it, too, is still in what the developers consider early access. True, plus you don't really have to worry about lack of customization here. Like you said, it's all about the user-generated content. You can make pretty much any type of vehicle, spaceship, walker, insect, jet, boat, wall, or whatever, hot dog, 
you like, and then send it to the battle against other strange or awesome looking robots. Kinda reminds me of that old show BattleBots or Robot Wars. Oh yeah, BattleBots! Man, imagine if they still had that now. I know, right? <sighs> this game is like taking all the stuff you used to try and make with Legos, and then make it fight against all the stuff your friends made with Legos. And then the best part is you don't have to worry about waking up in the middle of the night to step on one when you're trying to go pee or something. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Recently they just totally changed the core game mode from the traditional deathmatch style to a try and destroy the other player's base as fast as you can game mode. Kind of like a MOBA that's all about that base. Uh, sort of. <clears throat> you do get unlimited respawns now, and as you progress there are different ways you can defend your base. Defend your base. Defend your... Oh, sorry. Good thing is, if you still love the old game mode, they still have it. Well, good. Because anywhere from 15 to 18,000 players can be found battling it out on Robocraft daily, which is just shy of number three on our list, War Thunder. Offering a record-breaking amount of planes to choose from in-game, War Thunder has some super fast-paced World War II-era combat it loves to show off. And if that's not your thing, you can stick to the ground, taking on enemies in tank warfare all in one game. Yeah, well, I can say that the players that play it constantly tell us that it's hard to become unaddicted to it. Apparently, it's a very satisfying feeling one-shotting a higher-tier tank when it's all about the skill. Plus, the movement system for the tanks feels really good in this game. It's, it's actually like you're driving a tank instead of a car trying to get out of the mud. My favorite aspect, though, is that you can choose between arcade, realism, and simulator mode, depending on how you want to play it. And, of course, the game never makes you feel pressured to have to buy anything to enjoy it. For sure, plus it helps it also is on the PS4. It's pretty much on any platform. PC, Mac, PS4, Linux, SteamOS, and it's cross-platform. Not something we see a lot of. Hmm. So if you're all about action, you're probably already playing War Thunder and know it delivers. Unless, of course, you're busy playing our number two game, which is Warframe. Warframe was popular enough to make our list two years ago when it was just starting out. Yes, when it was just a wee little space ninja baby game, fresh out of beta, couldn't walk, barely able to grasp its skana with its tiny little hands. Uh, yeah, that. We're not going to be able to even begin to explain how much this game has changed and improved since then. It's absolutely crazy. Crazy! They've added in several different types of PvP, completely reworked the UI, added the dojos, the kubros, New maps and enemies, up the parkour elements in the game, tons of new weapons, I think now they have like 22 Warframes. Oh, and the Arcwing. Uh, Ar Arcwing? Is that like, is that like a jetpack? It's kind of like a space jetpack, basically. Space jetpack? Oh, I need it. Needless to say, Warframe is all grown up now, tweaked by its expanding and very dedicated dev team. It's made to so many of our top 10 lists, best games, I mean, it truly deserves all the glory it gets, especially a spot on this list. Alright, so check this out. Back in 2013 when we put this on our list then, the game had a consistent 10,000 players playing the game daily. Now, two years later, we've got more than twice that daily, and on any given Saturday, the game sees over 30,000 players on at a time. Damn, that's a huge difference. Yes, difference. That puts it up there in the top 10 games on Steam, free to play or not. You'd be surprised it's not our number one. Truth is, it's not even close to number one. But wait! There's more! We've got some honorable mentions worth mentioning honorably. You mean like Team Fortress 2, the game that was number one on our list last time? Yup. Team Fortress 2 still has so much popularity that it's pretty much doubling Warframe's player base on a good day. Yeah, <laughs> at least. So with that said, we've decided since it took the top spot on our last list, and since it's consistently standing within the top five games on Steam overall for years, that Team Fortress 2 will no longer be eligible to make our top 10 Steam lists. However, that doesn't mean that Team Fortress 2 is not one of the all-time greatest free-to-play games on Steam. So hats off to you, Team Fortress 2. You know, because they, they have hats, huh? Well said. Sort of. Yeah. The other one is Terra, which just debuted on Steam pretty much a week ago and already has just as many players playing at any given time as Robocraft. Just about. 
Yeah, we figured this was just an initial spike in popularity, and although the numbers may stay high, or even get higher once players notice, it's still just too young on Steam to determine an accurate spot on this list. And don't get us wrong, we love Terra. It's still personally my favorite free-to-play MMORPG, and the new Gunner class, huh, it's badass. Oh yeah. Anyways, we have kept you packed full of anticipation long enough. MMO Hut's number one free-to-play Steam game is, without a doubt, um, James, what what is the number one game? Ah, uh, just saying, it's here somewhere. I, I know where to find it, just I don't remember. Okay, what, okay, what okay, I'm here. Dota 2. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure they knew that was coming. Really, you think so? Yeah. Even if they don't play Dota 2, they can just look at their friends list and get a general idea of how hugely popular this game is. Put it this way, there are so many people playing Dota 2 daily on average that you can take the average player numbers from all of the other games on this list, 2 through 10, multiply them by 8 and still be a few hundred thousand players short of the number of people playing Dota 2 right this second. Holy crap. Yeah, so uh, not only is it the most popular free-to-play game on Steam, it's the most popular game on Steam. <laughs> Probably because it's owned by Valve, not nah, nah, Troll Voice. Probably because it's Dota 2, actually. I think that has a lot to do with it. <clears throat> yeah. Probably. There are so many already free heroes to choose from, hundreds in fact, constant critical tweaks to the balancing in-game, huge prize pools and popularity through its massive tournaments. It's, it's really the whole package. There is absolutely no doubt it's number one on our list. Awesome and agreed. Plus, now people can stop wondering why it wasn't on our last top 10 free-to-play Steam games video, even though that video was made a year before this game was even out on Steam. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not going to fix anything there. Yeah, well, probably not. Well, guys, thanks again for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe for awesome videos just like this one. And, of course, if you're looking for more information on the games in this list, we've got links below for the game profiles at thenewmmohuts.com. But until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. And also, I am out as well. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers. And gamers, get back to gaming. <laughs>